Hello and welcome to the Lunchtime Look North. In the headlines, a day to remember, Cumbrian cricketer Ben Stokes helps bring World Cup glory to England. And Steve Bruce bails at Sheffield Wednesday is the former Sunderland boss heading to Newcastle. It's a date that'll go down in sporting folklore alongside 1966 for football and 2003 for rugby union. July the 14th, 2019, the day England's men beat New Zealand to win their first Cricket World Cup. Top scorer Ben Stokes was at the heart of the nail-biting finale. There was a moment of good fortune as a shy at the stumps deflected off the Durham all-rounders bat for an extra four runs. And after a sudden death super over, England and Stokes were crowned champions of the world. Well, Mark McAlinden is at the Cumbrian Club where Ben Stokes first played the game as a junior. Mark. Well, Nisha, this is where it all began for a flame-haired boy by the name of Ben Stokes, Cockermouth Cricket Club in West Cumbria. And the reason New Zealand-born Ben was here, of course, was because his parents had come over here to work. His father, Jed, was a rugby league coach down in Whitehaven. But his parents were back in New Zealand for the thrilling finale yesterday, suffering with very mixed emotions. It's fabulous, really. I mean, uh, when we were watching it, it was an incredible feeling like to have your son out there doing what he does and then getting right down to the last ball so we probably got the best of both worlds I see it you know New Zealand played so well and deserves so much out of the game and they did get a lot out of the game too because mm -hmm. I don't think there'd be a fan in New Zealand who who wouldn't have thought that they gave it their best shot and they'd have to be very harsh if they didn't so but the, the way the game was played I would say that's always already in the annals of folklore as the best game of one day cricket ever played has to be yeah. Dude, what's it like watching Ben playing and things like that? Because he's basically won this game for England. Oh, it was a bit surreal, really. Just when you take into account the, the state of the game. And I was a bit, um, a bit numb, really. <laughs> and just and hiding under my blanket. And, and I just, at the end of the game, I just cried my eyes out, <laughs> basically. And, um, and I was... But I was sort of really, really disappointed for the Black Caps because they had given so much as well. And it's just, it, wouldn't it be great if, if it could have been a draw and they get, you know, it comes to New Zealand for six months and stays in England for six months. It just seemed like that would have been a deserving way to finish for both teams. It was fantastic. Well, of course, it was here that Ben's talent was spotted early, and one of the club's junior coaches is still active. I caught up with him this morning at a schools tournament for his reaction. He's always had that will, will to learn, and he's always had that, I suppose you call it steel, he's had that steel in himself um, to never give up and to give his best. And I think they, they, I think they actually call him the heartbeat of the team, don't they? Uh, and I can fully understand that. How pleased are you for him? I'm pleased for him, um, because how many people get the chance to win a World Cup in any sport for their country? It's a handful, isn't it? And he's a handful of people that have won a World Cup for England. Yes, we've had the footballers. Uh, and Have we won a Hockey World Cup at some time? But there's a very, very few people have got it, so I'm delighted for him. Well, we talk about redemption in sport, don't we, Nisha? Don't forget, just a couple of years ago, Ben Stokes bowled a final over in a World T20 final at the West Indies. Won. He was hit for four sixes. He was utterly crestfallen. I think what happened yesterday, though, might have made up for that. Back to you. Thank you, Mark. Football now, and Steve Bruce has resigned as head coach of Championship Club Sheffield Wednesday amid reports he's due to be appointed as manager of Newcastle United. The Magpies held talks with Bruce on Saturday, and he's the overwhelming favourite to succeed Rafa Benitez, although negotiations are thought to have been held up over a compensation wrangle between the two clubs. A man suffered serious injuries after crashing into a house in County Durham during a parachute jump. The 51-year-old student parachutist took off from Peterley Parachute Centre but crashed into the gable end of his home nearby Shotton Colliery. I've never heard such a sickening thud in all my life. I thought it was a car crash. I looked around the house and saw this chap just suspended from my gable end. 999. 
blood coming from here, his leg looked broken, mind you, at that point. In the next 20 years, Scarborough will see one of the biggest falls in the number of working age people of any coastal community in the country. At the same time, the number of retirees will grow by nearly a third. It comes as the councils held a meeting to work out how to attract more young people to the town. David Rhodes reports. Time moves slowly in this seaside resort. That's why for over a century people have spent their holidays here. But Scarborough is ageing rapidly. I work days, so I start at 7.15, finish at 8 o'clock at night. Increasingly, there are fewer younger workers like Kaylee to support those who are now retired. Careers-wise, um, I'd say there isn't really that much here for jobs. Um, you kind of find it's mostly in like shops or care homes. There isn't really much you can do. You kind of have to look further afield and move away, and that's why people kind of my age are moving away. In the next 20 years, Scarborough will see one of the biggest falls in its working age population of any seaside community in the country. The number of people aged 16 to 64 could fall from 61,000 today to 54,000 people in 20 years' time, a fall of 11%. Meanwhile, those aged over 65 could increase from around 30,000 today to over 38,000 by the year 2039, an increase of 29%. It's great people are living longer. More people are coming to the town to retire, so it's not just the population here. We're attracting older people, but we need more people to work in social care, so the gap is getting larger. We need to address it quickly. We're going to turn this into a 200-bed hall of residence. It'll be home to Sea Scarborough students, but equally home to doctors and nurses working in the local NHS. The Trust. local council approved plans for a £15 million regeneration project that will be led by the university turning this derelict building into high-quality accommodation for the next generation of Scarborough workers. What we need to do is bring people into the town, study with us in the town, and then stay in graduate roles in the town. They'll be living in the town, spending their money in the town, and that's going to bring benefits way beyond those to the university. The high street here in Scarborough, like other places, is struggling, and this idea is a simple one. Get more young people living in the town centre, and they'll spend money here, and that, in theory, should boost the whole economy. In the coming decades, towns across our region are going to have to deal with the realities of an ageing population. Scarborough hopes that it's taken the first steps in slowing or perhaps reversing the ageing process of this town. David Rhodes, BBC Look North, Scarborough. Time for the weather forecast now. And Lisa, it's looking rather nice, isn't it? It is indeed, certainly for the first half of this week, but the weather will turn more unsettled, I'm afraid, towards the end of the week. Tomorrow, another sunny and warm day, but there will be a few isolated showers around. If we look at the pressure charts, we can see it's this area of high pressure keeping our weather relatively settled, but that starts to drift away, and it will allow weather fronts to come in off the Atlantic as we head towards the end of the week, so the weather turns more unsettled. But in the short term, it's settled. You can see on the satellite picture all the sunshine we have had. Some fair weather cloud has been bubbling up so far today. So we're looking at sunny spells, patchy cloud and just a very small chance of the odd isolated shower say over the Pennines, the Lake District fells through this afternoon. But dry for most and feeling warm with gentle winds. Temperatures around 21 or 22 degrees. Now through this evening and overnight it is going to be dry. We're looking at mostly clear skies with light winds that will allow a few shallow patches of mist to form in places and temperatures down to round about 10 or 11 degrees. But tomorrow is going to be a lovely start, plenty of sunshine and for most of us it stays dry, fine and sunny. But again we'll see cloud bubble up through the morning and then into the afternoon there's a risk of a few sharp showers breaking out in places. Many of us will avoid these showers and stay dry. If you do catch one it could be on the heavy side and temperatures around 22 degrees. For Wednesday we will see an increase in cloud as we go through the day. A risk of a few showers and then cloudy for Thursday outbreaks of rain but brightening through the afternoon. Plenty of sunshine in that forecast. Thank you, Lisa. That's what I like to see. Right, that's all from me this lunchtime. Jeff Brown and the team are back with Look North at 6.30. Bye for now.